guys, how's it going? I'm getting ready to plant some things in the shade today and I really wanna show you the plants because they are so pretty. And I'm so excited to be over here planting some fresh stuff and I've got some big stuff to put in the ground. So this area looks like this pretty much all day long. There's a crab apple tree here, juniper there and behind me that form a pretty good canopy. There's a little bit of dappled light that comes through, um, but that's pretty much it. So what I thought I would do is start with my first layer, which will be a little bit taller, and that's gonna be these Empress Wu hostas. So come check out this bold texture. I love it. They grow about three to four feet tall and five to six feet wide. I think this is the largest hosta that you can get. And they're four feet tall when they're blooming. So you can see a bloom spike uh, starting right here. So that will come up above the foliage and they're kind of like a reddish purple color, the blooms are. Um, they're a zone three through nine, so incredibly winter hardy and very easy maintenance. You just have to cut them back in the fall before winter, um, just so that you avoid any insect or disease problems. And that's pretty much it. So I already have three in this area that I planted about, I think it was year before last. There's one here that you can see and then there's two more that are kind of hidden behind these hookahs. So that's gonna be the first thing I'm gonna tackle is digging these up and moving them back into this area right here. And it's early enough in the season to do that because the root system doesn't have a ton of foliar growth to support yet. Like if I were to be digging up a hosta this big, it might be a little bit detrimental. It could shock the plant because you know that root system has a lot of foliage to feed. Um, so yeah, that'll be the first thing I tackle and that'll be my tall layer. The next one down will be this gorgeous hookra. So this is called Primo Mahogany Monster and I believe this is a new one this year. They grow about 16 inches tall, their foliage does, and then of course their bloom spikes come up quite a bit taller. But these are so pretty. They're kind of a burgundy color with creamy pink flowers. Um, and you know what, I would plant these even if they didn't bloom though, because the foliage is just so beautiful and ruffly. Um, and they'll grow about 22 to 28 inches wide. So they'll just make a beautiful uh, kind of almost hedge right in here. And they'll kind of butt up right to the trout lilies that are in beautiful bloom right now. And then my third layer, so it, you can't really see it yet, it's just breaking dormancy. Um, I've got little Hakanakloa in here. So the variety is called All Gold and they will come up and fill in. They get about, yay tall, 12 to 16 inches probably. And they fill in with this just wispy, soft, grassy texture that's bright yellow. So I'll have my yellow grass texture, I'll have my beautiful red, and then my bold green. And I think that this recipe, these three plants are classic shade plants that look really good together. So let me start by moving these hostas and then we'll get everything else in the ground. so pretty together and it's going to be even more spectacular once this Hakana Chloa grows up a little bit and fills in. And I'm not sure if I already went over winter hardiness zones, but I thought I would touch on that really quickly. The Hakana Chloa here is a zone five through nine. I garden in a zone five, so it does really well here. The Hukara is a zone four through nine, so a little bit winter hardier down to negative 30. And then the Hosta is a zone three through nine, so even more winter hardy. And these are all extremely easy to care for. Typically the Hakana Chloa and the hostas I cut back in late fall, early winter, and that's especially important with the hostas. You don't wanna leave any foliage through the winter because they can har harbor disease and in insects. Um, the hookera is an evergreen perennial. Uh, in a zone five, it's not quite as evergreen as it is like in say a zone nine where it's more mild. So typically they do look fairly good through the winter, but they might by springtime have some tattered leaves 
especially like toward the base of the plant that you have to go in and clean up. But the hookah is even when their blooms are spent, the bloom stalks still look good to me. Um, it's the hostas that those, once the blooms are done, you wanna cut those off. Um, so I did want to mention that <laughs> I kind of forgot in the springtime, the sun is a little bit like lower in the sky this way. So in the late afternoon, we do get a little slice of sun that comes in. I am planning on planting a tree really nearby so it'll take care of the problem. But in the summertime, the sun is more straight up and down. So it is a lot more shaded, but it does, does look different from the very beginning of the video. So I thought I would mention that. So my six Empress Woos in here, I've got one right over here. There's kind of this like nice little empty space that I tucked one in. And then we've got these two that you can clearly see. And then the ones I dug up, I put one here, one there, and one tucked in way back here. And I left this section right here because I think I might plant a maybe a shrub or something to kind of weight down the corner of this uh, structure right here. So I wanted to leave plenty of room for that. Now, as far as watering goes, hostas like to be in kind of a moist, well-drained soil, which is perfect for this area. I already have drip run to it. In fact, you can kind of see <laughs> This is where um, I had one of the hostas. Was this where one of the hostas was planted? I'm not sure, but this is what I'll be doing. I'll be tapping into my drip tubes and then I'll probably be putting a two gallon per hour emitter um, in. And you know, we run our drips every day when it's really, really hot, but our soil is pretty well draining. So you have to kind of know your soil type and know how much water it uh, hangs on to, and then you can adjust accordingly. Um, and then the hooker is here. I have a drip tube that runs right by these foxglove. These are white foxglove. So won't that be pretty? So we'll have that layer in here and then there's some hydrangeas and carex that way. I've got some brown tubing in here that I'll be putting a T in and then I'll run just one length of brown tubing right behind the hookahs here. Um, and there's holes every 18 inches or so in that brown tubing that emit one gallon per hour. And so I have these space just about right, I think to hit like one hole per each hookra. And I already have a drip tube running right behind the Hakana Kloa. Uh, it's just covered with mulch and you can't see it. So anyway, I just thought I would show you guys what I was doing in this spot um, and then just show you some really pretty plants that do really well in shade because that can be really tough to bring in a lot of color and interest sometimes. Um, but if you layer your plants kind of like this, with really different textures and really different colors, you can really get a lot of interest. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be giving you progress shots as this area fills in and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.